Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I want to talk a little bit about shame. And I'm by no means a shame expert. And if you haven't heard of Brené Brown, I'll put links to her TED talk in the show notes below. Um, she did a TED talk a while ago, quite a few years ago now, um, all about shame. Um, and it was interesting because she then went through a shame spiral after she did the talk, because apparently the talk deviated from the normal talks that she did and she was trying something new and she it pressed her own buttons in pushing herself out of a comfort zone. Um, little did she know when she was going through her shame spiral that actually the TED talk had gone viral and not just the handful of people that were in the audience that she was panicking about having seen her do it, but um, millions of people all around the world <laughs> actually saw the talk. But it also launched her. And, and so I'm by no means saying that I have the knowledge and the insight into shame that she does, but it's a very interesting topic and I've experienced it from two sides of the coin in the last couple of weeks. One through talking to somebody who actually went through a bit of a shame spiral while I was chatting with them and going through my own personal shame spiral <laughs> shortly afterwards, which taught me a different experience. And so I thought I'd share it with you because it's something that we all experience from time to time and understanding it lessens its power over you. So in both instances that I'm talking about, it came from being vulnerable. It came from sharing a part of ourselves that we didn't really want other people to see, a part of ourselves that we were ashamed of. And shame is really a reaction of the ego to protect that part of you that thinks it's vulnerable. And yet the idiotic thing is that that part of you that it feels like it needs to protect is the truth of who you truly are. And if you've ever done any sort of work into past lives or future life progression, or if you're a spiritual, believe in any sort of thing like that, you realize that there's a part of us that's absolutely eternal. And that part of us can never be damaged or hurt or changed or, you know, it, it just is eternal. And yet our ego feels this overwhelming need to protect it, which as I said, is quite ironic. <laughs> so something that I noticed about going through my own shame spiral and something that I assumed about the other person that I was observing going through their shame spiral is when we allow ourselves to be completely vulnerable with somebody else, there is quite a strong reaction um, to that vulnerability, um, a sense of insecurity, a sense of um, feeling very raw and open and for me, what then happened, which I, this is what I wanted to talk about today, was after I felt all of these things and felt incredibly uncomfortable, I then decided that the person who I believed had sort of led to my shame spiral, I then sort of set about in my mind making him wrong. Um, and he wasn't wrong. I mean, he was just, you know, just an instrument to my shame spiral. I don't think he ever had any idea of where it was going to take me. But I wanted to share it because if you ever go through your own shame spiral, it's an interesting thing to notice that once we get over all the uncomfortable feelings, is that turning around of the protection, I guess it's the triggering of the fight, flight and freeze mechanism. And I don't tend to be somebody who normally fights. I tend to sort of freeze and tend to sort of shut off and withdraw. But in this particular instance, I noticed how my thoughts went into attack mode. They went into blame and making somebody else wrong and making me right to try and shore up my sense of self and make myself feel better. And I noticed that with the person who I was talking about that went through their own shame spiral, that I could see them wanting to make me wrong, even though I wasn't, you know, just like the person in my own spiral, they weren't the cause. I wasn't the cause of this other person's either. But we were both there witnessing, I guess, <laughs> what the other person was going through. So if you do end up going through a bit of a shame spiral, just be aware of how the thoughts in your head try to make you right and make somebody else wrong. It's not their fault that you're going through a shame spiral. And in fact, there's nothing really to be ashamed of generally. It's just an insecurity within yourself, a belief within yourself that there's something lacking or something not quite right or something that meets with disapproval. But none of that is actually true because the truth of who you are, as I've said, is eternal. 
the truth of who you are is just so completely amazing and expansive and unchangeably beautiful that there is nothing really to be ashamed of at all. So if you go through a shame spiral, what I would recommend is giving yourself some time and space just to sit with the uncomfortable feelings, to breathe really deeply and gently. Um, there's a 7 breathing exercise that you can do where you breathe in for 11 and you breathe out for 7. If you do do that, make sure that you put your hand on your stomach and you breathe deeply down into your stomach because if you breathe just into your chest, you are going to trigger your fight, flight and freeze mechanism responses even more and cause yourself to hyperventilate. It's all about slowing down your breath, allowing yourself to process whatever's coming up for you, because ultimately it's your stuff. It doesn't belong to the person that triggered you. Um, it doesn't belong to anybody else. And shame is different for each and every one of us. We all have the things that we try to hide from the world, the things we feel will get us rejected, will get us unaccepted, that will make us not belong or be loved or cared for or special or whatever it is. It's actually incredibly liberating when we sit with that discomfort and we allow it to pass and to be processed. Because on the other side of that is a freedom, a freedom to actually embrace who you truly are without shame attached to it at all. Um, if you want to know more about my coaching or if you want uh, any support in anything you're going through at the, t at the moment, then you'll find my contacts on my website as, as well as links to my online courses that I do as well. Thank you so much for listening. Have a fabulous weekend. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.